There are nine known causes of aging. There's a, there's a lot of them. I won't list them all. What controls those processes are these three main longevity pathways. So sirtuins do a lot of things. They protect the cell from damage. They repair things. They reduce inflammation, um, even boost memory. So they're, they're very, very important for long-term health. And they are, they are boosted by a molecule called NAD. And so we've been uh, adding an NMN, which is a precursor to NAD, to the water supply of mice for many years. Uh, and they're healthier and they live longer. The other, let's call it another central pathway is called mTOR, little m, capital T-O-R. And it has uh, evolved to sense protein intake primarily, amino acids. And so we, when you eat a lot of meat and a lot of uh, particularly branched chain amino acids, they're called, that are in meat, you uh, will stimulate this mTOR. Now, the problem is mTOR is a signal for growth rather than survival. And so that's why if you eat a lot, a lot of meat, you're not actually going, in my view, to stimulate your longevity. The other way around, when you're fasting, and you don't have a lot of amino acids coming into your stomach, then mTOR will be shut down. And that's a hunker down survival mechanism. Uh, and there's a drug called rapamycin that currently is used for immunosuppression, but in low doses, it inhibits mTOR and extends the lifespan of just about every organism that it's been fed to. And there are some people taking it for longevity. And then the third pillar is called AMPK. And AMPK registers the amount of energy in the body, uh, sugar, for example. And when its sugar levels are low and insulin levels are low, then AMPK will be boosted in, into uh, activity, boosted activity. And then the result is more mitochondria and less inflammation. So you want more sirtuins, less mTOR, and more AMP AMPK. Now, the AMPK is interesting. You can take a drug called metformin, which will boost AMPK. Now, metformin in the West is uh, UK and in America is uh, prescription only. It's not true for most of the world. Uh, but there are people who are taking it instead of for type 2 diabetes, which is what it's normally prescribed for, to lower blood sugar, just to take it as a preventative measure. But what's interesting is that there are tens of thousands of people that have been looked at and they also have lower risk of other diseases when they take metformin, cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, frailty. And it's a fact that people that take metformin daily have longer lives than those that don't even take the drug or have type 2 diabetes. Um, and so together, we've got those three levers that we can pull, um, along with exercise and, and intermittent fasting, um, that we think will greatly lengthen our lives by 15, 20 years or even more. As I was reading your book and as I, as I study your work, um, I, I saw a parallel in thinking in terms of what I found in my own career as a medical doctor. So, you know, I've been seeing patients now for just over 20 years. And I can't remember when, but somewhere along the line, I remember thinking, why are we looking at all these things as separate diseases? There's, hypertension, heart disease, you know, uh, cerebrovascular disease. And we, we're very much trained to see them differently with potentially different protocols for treatment. And then the more I sort of studied as to what is going on upstream from these things, the more you think, well, actually, you know, chronic unresolved inflammation is playing a big role in all of these uh, different conditions. Uh, insulin resistance is playing a big role in all of these conditions. And I found more and more that when I tackle these root causes with my patients, let's say inflammation and um, insulin resistance and help them become more insulin sensitive, actually they all start to get better, right? And, and I find that instead of seeing them differently, actually I could focus on the root cause. And I, I know in your, early on in the book, you write about these different hallmarks of aging, whether, as you've already mentioned, mitochondria are not working so well, or telomeres is shortening, um, or DNA being damaged. But then you went one step further, go, well, what's upstream from these? And 
is as I hear you talk about Satuans, mTOR, AMPK, and the benefits, forget longevity for a minute, just the benefits in energy or memory and focus. I think, well, presumably, well, is it fair to say there's a, you know, that sort of way of thinking is similar? Do you think that's accurate? And then the natural extension for me is if we are going this far upstream to delay and prevent aging, then presumably as well as doing that, we are going to improve people's vitality and their quality of life because all kinds of other things are going to get better as well. Yeah, well, so modern medicine, as we call it, uh, it needs an overhaul. It's very uh, 19th century where we've been classifying diseases based on how they look at the end of the process. Yeah. The, the real underlying process is aging for most diseases that, that kill people in uh, and in fact, most of the world. And we've been ignoring the root cause of these diseases. It's, it, it's like in physics, when you've got the periodic table, and then in the early 20th century, it was figured out that the same particles are within each of those atoms. And so they're all made up of the same stuff. And that's a huge breakthrough. And the same with medicine and, and disease. We've realized that there's one unifying underlying cause for most disease and disability on the planet that we've literally been ignoring for hundreds of years. And I wrote the book, Lifespan, to wake people up to realize that it's not good enough to stick Band-Aids on a disease after it's occurred because it's often too late. We need to get ahead of it and address the root causes of aging itself. And the, one of the, the things that I like to say, because I believe it, uh, and it's also important that we move towards this as a society, and that is that aging is a medical condition. Admittedly, it's, it's common, but just because something's common doesn't mean it shouldn't be a medical condition. And if that definition was made formal or formalized by the governments around the world, then doctors like yourself could more freely prescribe very cheap and relatively safe medicines that could extend someone's life and make them healthier for five or even 10 years longer. But we still have to, we're still at an early stage where most doctors have not even conceived that aging is something worth talking to their patients about or that it's even malleable. Yes, very powerful. Um, I, I would like to think of myself as a quite a modern progressive doctor who stays on top of things, uh, trying to look for the root cause of a lot of my patients' problems rather than putting band-aids on. But I've got to be honest, you know, when was the last time I spoke to one of my patients about aging, specifically about aging? You know, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure I can remember in the, in the recent past when, when that would have been. I may have said something like, we know that strength training uh, some research has shown that that can help reverse the aging process, but the focus wasn't really on aging. So yeah, w I think that, that just speaks to how groundbreaking the work you're you know, talking about and presenting to the world. I think it really just speaks to how important and how cutting edge this work is. Well, yeah, I, I agree. And, and let me paint a picture of what the, the world should, should be like in my view that you go to your, well, first of all, a week before you go to your doctor, you have a stick on patch that's disposable and it will monitor you a thousand times a second for uh, all sorts of measures, movement, speech, heart, EKG for your heart, uh, temperature, uh, motion, depression. Uh, and that data will be fed into the doctor's uh, computers. And by the time you get there a week later, there will be a body of data that the doctor can look at and see if there's anything potentially wrong. You'll also be given a mouth swab at home to send in. And by the time you get to the doctor's office, you will be told your biological age. And some people are 10 years older than their actual age and some are 10 years younger. And those that are 10 years older, I would hope that the doctor could sit the person down or give them a chat and say, you know, you haven't led a very good lifestyle. We need to fix this. Here are the things that the computer and my, my knowledge are saying, but we also have these medicines that can help you to slow down the ticking of your clock. Um, and we even have this new therapy that will reverse your age by 10 years. 
yeah it's quite an exciting thought for me as a doctor that that might be available at some point in the foreseeable future I'm, I'm sure it's not as far away as we might think um but but as you were as you were describing that um david i i was I, I was taken back to 2015 and in 2015 i had the opportunity to make a series of bbc one documentaries called doctor in the house where I would go and stay with families uh, who had chronic health problems for four to six weeks. I'd live alongside them and try and help them. And it was, you know, one of the most incredible experiences of my life because I, I got to help lots of families, you know, reverse or significantly improve their conditions without using pharmaceuticals, just by making small and multiple changes to their lifestyle. And there was one guy in particular that came to mind who had... Uh, well, his wife had type 2 diabetes. He was, you know, overweight, really struggling, you know, pre-diabetic, I think. And there was a machine there. Now, I don't know how accurate it was, but it would it would take certain metrics and give him his biological age. Now, I, I, I can't say what that, what, what that machine was, so it, maybe it wasn't very accurate. But I can tell you what it was incredible is when we showed it to him, I said, chronologically, I think he was sort of 35 but biologically, he was something like 47 or 48. What that did to him and his mindset and his willingness to engage, I was like, that is incredible. Suddenly, he was all in, in terms of, right, tell me what to do, doc. What do I need to do? So I actually think there's another element to this. Yes, there's the biology, but there's also the motivational factor as to when someone is struggling, I think I think there's nothing like telling someone they're older than their actual age to get them to actually start making changes. Well, that's absolutely right. In the in my book, I give the analogy of a dashboard on a car. You wouldn't dare drive a car without a dashboard. So why do we do that with our bodies? And the idea of going to a doctor for an annual checkup uh, already seems medieval when we can monitor our bodies a thousand times a second and know if something is going to go wrong, when you're going to have a heart attack, not trying to save lives after it's actually happened. And so this measurement and this feedback from monitors, blood tests, uh, your phone can listen to you, uh, see how you're feeling, um, as well as your doctor monitoring that and, and being alerted if there's a problem. Uh, we're gonna soon, within the next five years, be in a world that really will make current healthcare look, look really pathetic. Um, but you're right about human psychology. If you don't have feedback, it's easy to give up. And so I've been doing uh, a test called Inside Tracker for the last 12 years. And I've been watching my blood biomarkers get better and better over those 10 years. And my calculated biological age go down uh, over this decade. So I'm potentially 10 years younger than I was uh, 10 years ago. So that's pretty astounding, right? The and, and that's helped me looking at those numbers is motivation for me to do the right things. Uh, and so I, I actually, I developed a test in my lab where we can look at someone's biological age from a mouth swab for just a few dollars. Uh, the cost is coming down uh, thanks to this tech by at least a hundred fold, hopefully a thousand fold. So people can easily monitor their biological age. Um, I have a sign up. If, I don't know if you would mind me mentioning it. Not at all, please. I, I think I'll be first on the list to sign up. <laughs> uh, you, yeah, you can sign up at drsinclair.com. D O C T O R S I N C L A I R.com. Uh, and get on the list. We're just going, we're just putting the final touches on this, this test. And the test also comes with uh, AI behind it. It'll tell you the best ways to slow down and even reverse aspects of your age and get that number to come down over time. If you enjoyed that clip, here's another powerful clip that I think you are really going to enjoy. You not only produce more immune cells, like there's natural killer cells. They kill, for example, cells that come infected with viruses. This is why physical activity is so good for us. It, it turns on all kinds of good processes in our body that keep us from aging and keep us from getting sick.